Amen. Good morning. Funny story. Pastor was in the kitchen. Didn't notice the hour. It's time to start and praise our God. Welcome everyone to the house of the Lord. It's 9.30 a.m., 9.33. And today is um, June 17th, the third Sunday we are going to share a sermon series telling your story. It's great to be here. You happy to be here? Amen. Amen. God bless everyone on this day. It's finally time to praise together. Welcome everyone to Manasquan Church. We're so glad you have chosen to join us today as we worship our God and Savior and fellowship together. So to start this morning, our music director, Christine, will lead us with an opening song. Good morning and happy Sunday, everyone. It's good to see you all here. And happy Sunday to you at home as well. What's up? Is it a phone that we hear? I don't know what it is. Something's going on in house. It sounds like music. I don't know. Okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna sing over that tone. <laughs> Thank you. Our opening song is God of Wonders by Mark Bird and Steve Hindelong. We've only done this song once. So it may be new to some of you, don't be afraid. Pastor Javier is gonna join us on guitar. Um, this is a song that <laughs> speaks to us about, um, wow, how it's beyond our comprehension really that our creator, not just of our world, but of the universe, of the galaxies, wants to share an intimate relationship with me, with you and with us. So will you stand and sing with us and let the Holy Spirit fill your hearts, your lives, and this church.
<laughs> Good morning and welcome to everyone here and online. If you don't know who I am, I'm Marilyn Jacobson. Nice to see you. Good, uh, from the moment we open our eyes each morning until we close them at night, God is with us. There is no one like you, our God. When we are surrounded by struggles in, the, all, in all the surprising places we find hope, Jesus is with us. There is no one like you, our brother. When we feel orphaned by the world, when we are welcomed into faith's family, the Holy Spirit is with us. There is no one like you, our witnessing spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Please join me in the opening prayer. You speak, God. You always speak, if we will but listen. All we need to do is to pause and turn our attention to the song singing from the heavens and whispering in the wind, to the flight of the dove and the touch of its wings on our heads, to the giggling of the water and the mark it leaves on our hearts. Your voice comes to us in faithful surround sound, beckoning us to join the chorus, share in the dance, and extend the invitation into all the earth. You speak, God, you always speak, and joyfully we are listening. Amen. Our anthem this morning was written by Gary Paxton, and it's called He Was There All the Time. And sometimes we forget in our day-to-day -day living how many blessings that God has given us, and we forget that he has been with us all along in the good times and in the bad times, in the celebratory times and in the sorrowful times. So this is He Was There All the Time. Time after time I went searching for peace in some void I was trying to blame all my ills on this world I was in Surface relationships used me till I Yeah. 
praise to God. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis 28, verses 10 through 19. It's about Jacob's dream at Bethel. And if you listen to the scripture, I think you'll hear the old familiar song that we used to sing. Sometimes we even sing it now, but we used to sing it when we were in Sunday school. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it, stu- there above it stood the Lord and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the God is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel though the city used to be called Luz. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And amen. Well, how many children we have today? I'd like to call them to the front, please. It's okay. It's okay. I'm going to talk you from here. Today's message for, uh, for our kids and, and those who are watching online, um, I'd like to ask you, have you ever had a dream? Um, I remember when Gabby started the, the dream phase. Some of them were really nice and some of them were a bit scary. Well, in the Bible, we learn about a beautiful dream that happened to a man named Jacob. And Jacob had a dream with a stairway. And, and it stopped, reached the heaven, and he saw the angels of God ascending and descending of those stairs. And can you imagine how wonderful this dream must have been? Jacob saw angels going up and down from earth to heaven. I'd love to dream without, with, with, with angels to have an idea of how, how they look. And um, think of the stories, drawings, or songs that you could write when you think of that scene. And the story goes on to tell us that the Lord stood beside Jacob while he slept and said, I will give this land to you. This, that's what the Lord said to this character that we know uh, as Jacob. And God also said to Jacob, I am with you and will keep you safe wherever you go. Just think of how happy and blessed Jacob must have felt He had the the most awesome and comforting dream. And then he woke up and said, surely God is in this place. So God has the same promise for us all today. It doesn't matter if we're children, if we're youth, if we're adults. I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. How cool is that? How great is that to Realize and understand that God is with us, that God keeps our dreams, that God leads and guides us. So pay attention when you wake up. God will give us a remarkable dream. Remember that ladder of angels. Amen? Amen. Amen. Dear God, we pray for our children. 
Uh, some of them are watching online. Some of them are, are enjoying the summer. My kids are in Puerto Rico. They're spending summer there and having fun too. And it doesn't matter our age. It says the scripture that our hearts, in our hearts, we need to be like children if we want to go to your presence. So I pray for everyone. Our dreams, our expectations, or everything that you have set for us, please guide us and lead us. And just show us the way. In your name, we thank you and forgive us these reminders that you are in our way. We're going to talk more about this in a sermon. Amen. Amen. We have a special prayer request, dear church. Um, a member of the church, and we sent an email uh, last night, yesterday. A member of the church with a small dog, 10 pounds, hypoallergenic. This is very important, and this is also an announcement. Uh, and a baby on the way, urgently, they need a place to rent. If you have a space available, or, or if you know of someone, uh, I'm not saying her name out of uh, um, safety, but this uh, lady is expecting a child and has a dog, and she needs a, urgently, she needs a place to rent. So I'd like to pray for God's provision and for God to show her the way. Anything that we can do as a church, we'd like to be there for her. And please also include in your prayers our BVS. We're going to have 16 children, and I think that's a great number to start after. You know, we're in a post-pandemic world, so instead of having 100, I think 16 is pretty good number still. Um, they, they, I know a day will feel like 40 or 50, so please pray uh, for this. And uh, we need more hands. We need staff. And also, I'd like to pray for our youth group, uh, the mission trip that we're get, getting ready to go in August. Amen. Let us pray. Precious God, we live busy lives. And just coming to church on Sunday mornings often seems like a sacrifice for us. There's so much to do, so much to worry about. Online services are good. It, it feels okay and comfy, but it will never replace. I've been online and and. and it's a blessing, but I know in my heart and I know by experience that it will never replace the experience of fellowship and worshiping together as one body in Christ. So we pray for our brothers and sisters that are streaming, that are watching the service online, praising with us in spirit, but we miss them. We miss you so much. We feel comfortable in our seats and we thank you for all who joins us. But please make us feel the urge of coming to the sanctuary to feel free, to feel the fire of your Holy Spirit in our hearts. We all are welcome to this safe and beautiful space. Thank you for all that you, all, everyone that is enjoying an awesome summer. Thank you for the time and help you grant us to do many things. Help us to be the people of astounding faith who have seen the light of resurrection, who know that you have conquered death. Fear to go out there cannot claim and bind us anymore. You have released us to serve others and witness to the glorious good news of Jesus Christ. So we bring the names of people near and dear to us in our hearts into this prayer. Help us to feel the power of love in our lives. Inspire us to move into compassionate ministries to your world. For we ask these things in the name of our risen Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. And now we pray all together with the confidence that we all are children of God as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. And now we're going to sing a song of preparation. Our song of preparation is, Oh God, Our Help in Ages Past. It's number 117 in your hymnal, and we'll be singing verses 1, 2, 3, and 6. Will you stand and sing with me?
now in this moment, we ask you, precious Lord, that in the same way that this scripture has blessed my life, it can be shared now with your people and everyone that is watching and praising with us through the miracle of technology and with everyone that we can share this scripture and this word in our journey during the week. We open our hearts, our minds, and our souls to listen to your sweet voice. We thank you, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So today is the third Sunday of uh, our sermon series called Telling Your Story. We have been sharing stories for the past two weeks, and um, we're going to stop next week. We're going to have a, an invited speaker, and she's going to preach on Lord's Prayer. And then the last week in July, we're going to finish the sermon series. So today, the question for us to reflect in, and, and, and this scripture is, is this sermon is based, is God, where are you? And we read Jacob's story, and I, would like, I want you to think about these questions that I'd like to, to introduce. God still speaks. God is not silent. God has not forgotten the story that God started with you. So the question is, God, where are you? God, where have you been? God, in the midst of all of this that we are going through, why we cannot feel your presence sometimes? For, for those of us who are feeling a little lonely, you know, um, Pastor David is visiting, but the house without the children... It doesn't feel like, it feels like a lodging place, like some strange <laughs> area, but it's, it, it, it doesn't feel like, like, like home. It's home, but it doesn't feel like home. Uh, I miss their energy. They're all the time doing this and that, and I'm calling, hey, David, this. Hey, De Gabriela, stop that. Hey, Gabby, hey, do. you know, all that busyness. I miss it. And, and for those who, who feel a little lonely, a little alone, if you'll just practice looking up, we might notice that God is already there. And this is just an example. There's so many other examples. I'd like to share with you three really short stories. One of them is, I know this talented, hardworking, good husband and faithful man. He dedicated his life to providing for his family. And suddenly his wife gets sick, ends up in bed, and doesn't last three months. She passed and left him with a five-year-old boy and a three-year-old girl. His family lives far away, and he has no one nearby to help him with the kids. And first question that comes to mind is, God, where are you? In the midst of a world in which people turn their backs on God, he is directed to a daycare right next door to his house and a church in which the children get to know God. The family is sustained and blessed. And today he witnesses and affirms that it's not possible to raise your children without God. And, and I believe in this. It's, it's so hard. It's practically not possible to raise children without God's help. Second story, a faithful believer for years. And a servant of God, a sweet 92-year-old lady, can no longer leave the house, clean or cook. She can go shopping and barely can hear the phone. Her children are busy working. And um, she spends the week by herself. She seems to fade as, little by little, her loved ones forget about her. Her only contact with the world is her Bible and her TV. In the midst of her loneliness and depression, she wonders, where are you, God, in the midst of all of this? And then all of a sudden, someone knocks the door and says, hello, ma'am, the church is prepping dinners. We want to share a daily dinner with you. Would you accept this blessing? A weekly dinner... A daily dinner maybe doesn't sound like much, but for, for people like this, it means the world. It means that it reminds them that God is there, that someone cared for them, and it's their contact with the world. 
And the third one I already mentioned before we prayed. A young member of this church calls me this week and says, Pastor, I don't, uh, you don't know me, but I need your prayers. I'm having problems with my boyfriend. I'm pregnant, and I have a small dog, and he kicked me out of home, and I have nowhere to go. So I need the church or someone to help me find an apartment to rent. I know that in her mind, what she is wondering is, where is God in the midst of all of this? And I can tell endless stories. Maybe I can share three more, six more, 12 more. God said to Jacob, I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised to you. And I know we have been there. Sometime in our lives, we have asked ourselves, where are you, God? I don't believe in small or big miracles. I believe in miracles. What might be a small miracle for you might be a world-changing experience for me. Or maybe what is a big, big, big deal for you for me is something simple, but it's still a miracle. Amen? The church is the reminder in the world that God exists and is present. And maybe I should have ended the sermon with this line. Because the church is that rock that represents what Jacob did by placing that rock and saying, this is a reminder that God is here, that he will be here, that he has been here with us. We are the reminder for people out there that God still is. The church is the rock that God placed in the midst of a shattered and broken world to remind people that God is the center. I know that all of us at some point in our lives have asked ourselves, God, where are you? God wants to continue doing miracles and restoring lives, not only for us, but through us. In one way or the other, most of us have been in this situation. We might not be running for our lives from family members like Jacob was running from his brother, but many of us have felt sometimes as if God had many plans for us and our futures, and, and then God for, forgot about us for some reason. For example, some of us felt like God was in the building on our wedding day. I was on a wedding last Friday, and they did something that is so rare and strange these days. They had communion at the wedding. And even me, that I'm a pastor, I was like, wow, what happened here? Amazing. And maybe you felt like that day when you, uh, and your wedding day, that God was there with you and he was going to be there all the time, but then missing in action once our marriage gets, got in trouble. Some of us felt like God was in our corner when we were young and healthy, but have forgotten about us as we aged. Or maybe some of us need to, needed help making an important decision in our lives. And we used to hear God's voice so clearly. And now, all we seem to hear is... Nothing. This is a lonely moment in Jacob's life. He was running to protect his life. And Jacob, Jacob was no saint. This is his sad journey when remembering how hard Abraham worked to ensure Isaac's family stayed in promised land. And let's tell the truth. I was mentioning in the earlier service that when it comes to a Bible character, I try to tell the whole story. Not only the pretty things. Jacob has act with deceit, trick his brother, and is on the run. He has propped his head on a rock that used as a pillow, in the middle of nowhere, thinking, what have I done? God, where are you? But then something happens. He falls asleep, and through his dream, he realizes that God was already there. In fact, angels were busily moving about from earth to heaven. At this moment, Jacob realizes something that we would all like to know. We haven't run be, behind, be beyond God's reach. And maybe we can think, 
look at God blessing this man that was a cheater, that had a past, that was conscious of his actions, but needed God. We all need God. I think we all have a past. Maybe we haven't tricked our brothers or sisters, but we need God as well. It turns out that God was already there, and God is still busy shaping our story. And Job received a promise. It's the same promise his grandfather received, because no matter our past, God hasn't forgotten about us. God wakes up and proclaims his famous line. God was there, and I didn't know it. God is here. God is not silent. God is still shaping our story. Sometimes we feel like when we see the news, if you watch the news because it's depressing, or are you God? In the light of his realization that God was already in this place, Jacob creates a reminder setting up his stone as a pillar. In this way, Jacob and the others will remember that God is always present in our lives, helping us along our journey. And I want to invite you this week to establish a reminder. Maybe you can put a note on your fridge, or maybe you can put something on the table. Make it, I don't know. Just try to find out a reminder so that you can periodically stop and you can remember that God is that God is with us, that God is with you. This week, every time you notice that you had your head down, staring at your phone most of the time, please stop. Oh, no, I've been, I'm going through something. I, my foot, my fa- this is a parenthesis. My Facebook was hacked. So if you look for me, you won't find me. And I'm in review. Someone hacked it, posted something that was apparently not fit for a pastor's profile, and I'm blocked. So I am, you know, I am breaking that addiction. (laughs) I look at the phone and without, it's like not having a phone. So please, please take all that time that sometimes we invest in other things and stop and look up. Certainly, God has been with us many times and we didn't realize it. Look around for just a moment and see if you notice God at work in the life of someone around you. How beautiful it would be to be able to realize more often that God is busy shaping our story and the history of those around us. We will be a little more graceful to people out there, to our children, a little more supportive to others. Or a little more encouraging to our neighbors. We need the world to change for the better. Let's start home. Amen? Let's start as God's people. Let him change everything around you for good. It's time to recognize that God with us and actively shaping our story. We are the rock that will remind others that God is here. Amen. Let us pray. God of goodness and wonders, we want to stop right now to thank you for all that you have done, for all that you do and all that you will do, not only for us, but through us, for others. How many times do we take for granted your mercies and care for us and our loved ones? How many times have you been present and we have noticed you truly walk with us? I know that many of us here have been through very, very, very difficult situations in life. And maybe the stories that I shared are nothing compared to what we have gone through. I know that all of us at some point have not known what to do, where to look, or, or who to believe in, or how to feel your presence. But I know that you are close. We know that you are close. We live very busy and complicated lives. Please help us to stop for a second to feel your presence filling us again. We want to become 
We want you to become our priority. And then teach us to share your love and mercy with others next to us. Help us to share your love. Teach us how to bring the good news of your care and attention to so many people who need you. Just as much as we do. Teach us to be the rock. The reminder, the church that you want us to be. We ask this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Dear church, before, before praying for the offerings, um, I want to share with you a quick testimonial. We had a, a stewardship meeting last week, and I, I left thinking and, and reflecting about um, what we discussed that day. So... I thought maybe I can share a testimonial of something that happened before offering. This has been a hard season for my family and, and for me. And um, a pastor usually listens to prayer requests, but rarely shares what's happening in their, in their, in, in their lives. And um, what I'm um, trying to mention is that it's been hard the transition, the move to a new place, my in-laws in a very, very delicate health condition. It's been great. It's been wonderful. We love it here, but so many things. My wife had to go to Puerto Rico to take care of her parents, and it's the first time that the family is separated for more than three weeks. And um, she's a teacher's assistant, so she doesn't work in the summer, plus the moving expenses and our folks' health condition. And everything, you know, stack and stack and stack and accumulates and then it represents a financial baggage. And last week we received an unexpected surprise and it was a great blessing. Some help from Renee's uh, Road to Recovery Fund from Manasquan United Methodist Church. Totally unexpected and I had to ask what is this fund? I was like, what? what's happening? What's this letter for? Why? And that will cover part of the medical expenses uh, for my in-laws. And as a pastor, I usually don't accept this kind of help. And please don't get me wrong, not of, out of pride, but I, I just try to pass it to other people that might need it more. But this time, God had it for us. And we want to thank you, precious church, for this surprise. I haven't been here for a month, and I'm receiving surprises like this. And I say this because I want to be an example of sharing my story so that others can know what the mission of the church is, what the real mission of the church is. And tomorrow can be me, tomorrow can be you. My personal commitment to give not only covers church's bills, church's mission is not only church's bills. There's so many other things that we help with. But also, it, it, it helps to transform people's lives and carry out God's mission. And I invite you to be supportive, to commit ourselves to giving with excellence of what God has given to us. This is why we give. This is why we try to do the best that we can with what God gives us to be able to share with the community. This time it was a pastor, and in future it will be any of us. Can you please... Read with me the offering introduction. How awesome is our God. God showers us with blessings day and night. And now at this time and in this house of God, we have the opportunity to return those blessings with our gifts, our tithes, and our very selves. Amen. We have different ways of giving. Please don't forget, you can always uh, go online, manasquanumc.com, through Venmo, app, banco, or mail. And this is also for uh, the worshipers online's uh, knowledge. Amen. Please stand for the doxology.
let us pray. We offer our gifts to you, steadfast love, not because you need them, but so others might be as blessed as we are by your presence, your power, and your peace. Amen and amen. Our closing hymn. Our closing hymn is one we haven't sung in a while. It's Rock of Ages, and it's in your hymnal number 361. And we'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 3 by Augustus Top Lady. Here we go. Before receiving the, the words of blessing, um, I'd like to remind we have 16 children for BBS, and it's going to be a blast August 1st to the 5th, and then after this, um, we leave to the uh, youth group's children mission. Let me see, in August 4th, UMC Family Night at the Blue Claws at 7 p.m., all children and youth are welcome to sing national anthem at the game. Tickets are available in the office, and August the 7th, like I mentioned, youth mission trip to Virginia. Amen? Amen. Well, dear church, go forth in peace. Let's go and share our stories. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen, Amen. and shalom. Shalom.